These are 10 financial habits that have given me the life that I have today, that I can have the flexibility to be a, a stay-at-home mom and spend time with my kids without having to worry about money. The first one is really establishing a why, and that is to ask yourself, do I want to spend money on this thing over here, this blah item, or do I want to blank insert your why here? So for me, it is to have the flexibility to work wherever and have more autonomy over my time. And now that I'm a mom, it is to be able to spend time with the kids. Although we only have one now, but we might have two later. So anytime I want something, which happens often, it's not like I don't want things. I want things all the time. Like I want a new camera, but you know, do I want a new camera or do I want the flexibility to stay at home with my baby? I have a camera, so obviously I don't need a new one. I can just not buy one and be okay. So that's the first one. Have a very clear why, because when the going gets tough, that why is the thing that will keep you going and make you more okay with being uncomfortable with not buying the thing that you want. Number two, every time you save money per month, instead of having that money just live in your bank account still, you transfer it into a high yield savings account. There are a bunch of them nowadays. You can get anywhere between 4% to 5%, sometimes even more uh, APY. That just means like if you put a thousand in there, every year you get four to five percent of that. It's a lot better than just your typical checking account and like your Chase or your Bank of America. That is like next to nothing. So why do this? Why do this? Let's pretend. <laughs> Let's not pretend. Let's use a real life example. Recently, I canceled my YouTube premium membership. It's a family account, so it's $23 per month. So instead of that extra $23 living in my bank account where I can still spend it on something else like eating out coffee whatever it is and i now transfer that into my high yield savings account every month so i can't inflate the 23 into my life somewhere else because that money is gone now so that is that's why you do it you don't you don't deflate your youtube premium to inflate somewhere else because well, there's really no point of doing that. You don't save any money. Now, boom, you got money working for you. It's not a crazy investment or anything. It's just some extra money on top. If you don't think it's a lot of money, like if you don't think $10 a month is a lot of money, then pretend you're transferring $10 a month to somebody else every month. And in your mind now, that really adds up. Number three, canceling subscriptions as soon as you sign up. Sometimes you want to watch a show on whatever, I don't know, Netflix, HBO, whatever. So you sign up and it's like, I don't know, $20 a month or something. And you watch your show and you forget. So now you, they, they've, they've got you. They've got you for two months in a row. That's like 40 bucks. But as soon as you sign up, you can cancel and you still get that month of membership to watch the thing that you want to watch, but it'll just automatically not charge you. Number four is figuring out how to do what you want to do with the things that you already own. So if you want to start a new hobby, for example, starting a YouTube channel, don't go out there and buy a bunch of equipment, use what you have. Another thing, maybe something more pertinent would be like starting drawing or painting or something instead of buying completely new materials. Uh, try some paper and pencil or pen and try that out first to make sure that you actually like doing the thing before you go buy fancy stuff that you might not like doing in the future. What I'm trying to say is just make sure that you actually want to do the thing that you want to do before you go and invest a bunch of money into it. Because sometimes we think we're going to like something and we don't. Happens to me all the time. Number five, something else that we started doing maybe last year is checking your net worth every single month. And I know it sounds crazy, right? Like why do, I, why, why do you need to check your net worth every single month? Like that sounds obsessive. It's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's once a month. It's not like it's every day. It is important to know where you stand with your finances. Without knowing your numbers, 
you can uh, things get all jumbled up in your head you don't actually know what's going on maybe your stuff starts inflating your lifestyle starts inflating very slowly and you don't even realize it and being aware of your numbers just checking your net worth every single month can reset that down a little bit and it takes maybe 10 minutes a month could save you a lot of money and if you're making a lot of progress i mean it could feel really good too to see your net worth go up all right number six resetting your spending habits by doing an intentional spending month or even a no buy challenge i am notorious for spending money on clothes i did a no buy challenge on personal items for myself things that i have that i don't need more of and it's really showed me that i don't i don't need those things if i want something i have a list of wants and every time i want something i type it in number seven is setting aside your savings and investments first not last savings first whether it's for your roth which is i think seven thousand a year now or your 401k that takes off a chunk of your paycheck or a private investment account whatever it is do that first and then do your bills and then do your fun extra money that you can spend on whatever you want but like january 1st hits you can put 7k in your roth right away don't even have to think about it you can increase your 401k percentage now you really don't need to think about it because it's just taken out for you you don't have to do anything uh, for private brokerage you can do a monthly instant deposit that takes it right out of your bank account puts it in and that's the magical part thinking about it makes it harder number eight is foregoing upgrades unless it's absolutely necessary a new phone don't have to get a new one every year like there are situations where those things make sense and then there are situations where it just looks cool or the new novel thing is very shiny and interesting and you want it but do you really need it i think that's the question that we all need to ask ourselves like do we do we need it number nine is you can think of your purchases as hours worked or what it could be if you saved it and invested it instead of buying the thing this is what i used to do when i had a job that made like eight dollars an hour i would think like all right this this pair of leggings is like $98. That's more than 10 hours of work. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. It's like 12, 13 hours of work. Is it worth the pair of leggings? Sometimes it is worth it. Sometimes it's not. The other option is you go type this into Google, a uh, compound interest calculator, and you go into the investor.gov link or whatever, and you put initial investment as the cost of the item so $98 no monthly contribution you do like 7% 3 3% variance or whatever over 30 years and you see what that number could have been like it could have been 1000 or 2000 i don't actually know the exact number for a $98 item the last thing sometimes you save so much already like you've saved everything you've scrapped all the subscriptions you're buying secondhand clothes you're i don't know getting hand-me-downs you're, you're frugal to the max and you're saving a bunch of money but it's just not fast enough like you need to save more you want to save more and the only way to do that is to make more to save more so i do recommend just always having a side hustle going on all the time you never know if it could be could become more someday it could be the full-time thing that happened to us in 2020 we had a side hustle going and it became it became a thing so we quit our jobs went all in on it and it was nice it was nice here we are here we are financial habits they're really important have fun getting rich